All right, hello, uh, we are on air. Uh, welcome everybody, I'm Max uh, from Human Colony and I'm starting my short, brief webinar on um, alien medical policy. And today is July 9th, and it is in reaction of to, to re, in reaction to today's uh, Jim's channeling of the curve. Uh, it was an exciting webinar, so you can look it up on Human Colony, uh, Hukula TV on YouTube uh, for July 9th. And there, uh, the curve mentioned that uh, the representatives of Earth governments uh, express their interest in getting medical treatments for their individuals, basically members of governments, members of military, members of possibly other establishment. Hello. Hello, thank you for joining. We're already on air. Uh, and that would be, we have with me Fana Zenba and Carolina. Welcome, uh, my friends. All right, so basically, they said that they would be interested in medical treatments. The, whatever, military establishment representatives. And the aliens was th were thinking that um, it was, it would be um, unethical to treat the establishment and not to treat others. So I already sent my uh, telepathic messages, telepathic messages, telepathic messages to um, the current friends, to our alien friends suggesting that that's a great opportunity and they should um, take take that opportunity and offer the offer the treatments uh, to whoever can come and uh, now I just want just to broadcast that uh, that opinion that's basically opinion a suggestion my commentary and again the topic is that uh, should alien treat our leaders, establishment leaders, or is it unethical? And first point is, um, you know, it's it's our representatives, so it's not that very unethical. Whoever they decide is appropriate, I think they're entitled officially to decide, right, to who to treat. So that's that would basically would be the Earth, Earth, our planet's decision who to sent there for the treatment and because they're leaders or an establishment you know that's their job to to choose who to send so I think that's would be first first uh, point why to approve that second point is you know as a healer I would treat anyone right so if someone comes to me and I don't approve of this polit their political view or views or whatever personality. I would still treat them. So, so it's actually not for the doctor to decide who to treat. Basically, you know, the doctor is to treat anyone, right? So that would be the second point. It, you're not deciding to treat bad guys versus good guys. You just decide to, to treat whoever comes versus don't treat at all. So I think from medical perspective, even treating bad guys or not so ethical guys is still okay. Um, and uh, the third point is it's a great opportunity for for developing human alien relationships. Suppose you treat one of the leaders and save their lives, right? I'm talking now to the aliens. Suppose you you dear alien friends treat one of our bad guys like a dictator and save them their lives. That might make them a little better. Of course they would not live that long but uh, I mean they would live longer if you treat them possibly but uh, they would be exposed to kindness of the aliens and possibly they would be also exposed to some information which they would get wouldn't get otherwise so so I can imagine like one of their you know um, say 
how do we call them? Uh, imagine a conservative racist dictator uh, coming or potential dictator, right? Coming up there and being treated by the aliens. And suppose the treatment takes a week. Of course, they can heal, treat him faster. But suppose that he stays there for a week, right? And you know, while in their in their medical treatment facility, you could give him access to your information, like your internet. Give him like a laptop with a connection to your uh, vast knowledge, and give him. Uh, say a meeting with an angel. I would say an angel would be, for an angel would be much easier to get there than here. And maybe give him a psychic reading and reading of his future and whatever consultations he can get in a week. And you know, just ask his questions. And I think that would <laughs> that would change much. That would change much in that dictator. So. Or dictator, or whatever, a military person, or political person, or financial person, or a banker. Just spending in a higher vibration and a fourth density for a week would change them. So that's a great opportunity without any harm, without any hidden motives, without any implants, without any brainwashing to actually brainwash them into the good. Uh, tell, tell them about their past lives and what are their mission in this life. Uh, that would be a great spiritual experience for them and basically heal, I mean their main pain is the fear and all of them on the top they are, what is it word, ridden? I don't know the word, uh, driven by fears, are populated by the fear and after they see the bigger picture from up there they wouldn't be as afraid anymore and that would change the world. So, so from practical perspective perspective it's um, it's great to heal anyone now how do you choose basically another point point number four or whatever is that you can't really do give therapy to all billions of humans right every human is sick every human needs your therapy so you're not in the position to give therapy to all whatever eight billions right so if you can't heal eight, eight billions, how can you choose less than eight, right? How can you choose hundred million? Still, there is no fair way of choosing. There is absolutely, it's not possible to choose who to who to treat. I mean, it's it is just an impossible task. So, a, a priori, from the beginning, there is no fair way to give treatments to all humans. So you have to choose, right? So it is not actually an action of you know treating and healing, curing all the humans. It is a gesture, a demonstration, and the beginning of the conversation. So it is more a demonstration of your capacity, a demonstration of your goodwill. A beginning of the contact and a service. Now, in human, you know, you might be worried that humans will see that as unethical that you would take whoever you are sent by governments, right? Um, so, in human practice, it's usually solved by developing a policy and designing. A committee which would take responsibility for that, so that would be wouldn't be decision of the whole Gork Fitnier or whole whole alliance. It would be a decision of specific individuals who volunteered to to develop the policy and to choose who to treat. So suppose your first days you you get you are sent five people, or so you, get, you are given a list of five people, and second day you are given a list of fifty people, and so they are given a list of 200 people, right? And at some point, your capacity would be limited. You can't treat them all. So you need a committee which would then make this very tough decision who to treat. 
and um, I would suggest make a committee from like interstellar, intergalactic, intergalactic, and um, include some humans in it. Include some other representatives from Earth. Like I would suggest include a dolphin there and. Yeah, seriously, a dolphin, or maybe a dolphin tribe, a representative of a dolphin tribe, and maybe an elephant. It it will be a, a you know a wise, a wise committee, and you know it's impossible to make it fair, so you will have to make choices. And first choice, obviously, the most critical sick people who are not destined to die. Basically, there is a karmic uh, plan, the divine plan. For them, and so if it is possible, permitted by the divine plan for them to, to continue, then treating them would be a good option, right? So most um, critical cases, and the second thing I would say it would be a nice, wise policy to treat important people, just important, influential, influential people. I think that would be a great policy, because if you treat an influential person you make them more positive. Yes, you extend their life, and even if they are negative, they will be negative for a longer time, but but you make them more positive, you enlighten them. Next point, maybe number six, is that um, maybe, uh, second practice in human society is to have quotas. Especially, it is a big practice in social socialist countries and and uh, communist countries. So when the sub demand is big and supply is limited, you can get a quota. Like Americans have quotas on how many people they allow into the country um, for visas and uh, citizenship. So for visas, not no not citizenship. So uh, a quotas a quota is a very strange bureaucratic way to make unfair things seem more fair. So you can uh, make a, a, a rule that for every government official that you treat, you treat one child um, or a pregnant woman. And also you might propose to them to send you some scientific officials influential scientists, especially medical scientists, right? And maybe cultural influential people, like artists, actors, directors, writers, and social figures and so on, religious figures. Because for them it would be not only treatment, not only the demonstration of a goodwill, but also eye-opening, uh, enlightening experience, transformational experience. So the more people visit there, the better. Even if it is, if you count like few of them, tens of them, not hundreds, still it will be very big. Now, and the last point I wanted to make was to imagine, dear aliens, imagine how that can grow. So. At some point, it would be nice to train some humans to take part in medical work you do. So train our doctors to do the therapy, even as nurses. And then later, it can be that experience can be copied on Earth, and you can open alien clinics on Earth in some medical centers possibly initially in military medical centers, but later in civic civic uh, medical centers. So that's, you know, that's a, a road map. It is, uh, it is a wonderful benevolent path of which can develop into wonderful collaboration when um, Earth doctors will treat aliens, Aliens will treat humans, and there will be collaboration in the sky and on the ground. And that's about the end of the message. It's just an opinion. Of course, it is a judgment call. So, so that's my opinion. Take take that offer. Offer your take that interest from the military and 
establishment and take them up and uh, cure them, especially the ones which are critically sick. And I invite uh, discussion from the audience. Unmute yourself, speak up. I got in late, Max, so I only heard the last part of what you said, so I really oh, don't have a lot to say. I'm sorry. I can repeat. Basically, I suggest, um, you heard what Takar said today, that military are interested in being treated in alien medical hospitals. So I suggest just do that. Treat whoever they send. It will be enlightening for anyone. Yeah, I heard a little bit of something about that in that... Um, they, the aliens, do not want to allow any healing on from them until it's opened up to everyone. Because the way it stands right now, the elite only want to be able to get healed. Right. Um, I don't, when you say everyone, do you mean like all 8 billion? Yes. I mean, it's impossible. They, they want it to be, the aliens want it to be opened up so that they would be allowed to come here with their uh, healing ships right. and help us. But see, the way it is right now, the um, elite want that just for themselves, not for anyone else. And so the aliens are like, we're not going to give it to you at all then. It's impractical for, for them to refuse because, I mean, they can't treat the whole earth. I mean, the problem on earth goes beyond medicine. I mean, even if you cure every human, you know, they just cure more soldiers who will fight, right? So it's, it, it doesn't solve the main problem. They can't really solve our problems for us. It could be only a demonstration of the goodwill. It cannot really become practical in terms of... We lost you, Max. I can't hear you at all. Yeah, your, uh, maybe your mic is not working. Maybe you can uh, drop, drop out and get back in or something, or mute and unmute or... No, we can't hear you. Yeah, no, right. Wow, that's an interesting uh, discussion, right? I mean, that's uh, very interesting, all the points that he uh, spoke about, like... Uh, for me, I'd like... Still no sound right now. I didn't say anything. Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we hear you. We can hear you, yeah. I think what happened, I started being upset, and or at least slightly upset, and the aliens just, or my guides or whoever, uh, blocked my sound, so uh, that, that part of my conversation wasn't recorded or broadcasted. Uh, basically, my point was, you know, it was, would be... A any option would be un unfair. Any option. Whatever scheme you design or anyone designs would be unfair. You can't really make a fair scheme for Earth. So it has to be partially fair, most practical, but it cannot be fully fair. I have an idea. Mm -hmm. What if there were clinics around Earth? And then the ones who don't want to go to the Earth clinics and are open to going to other planet clinics have the option to go to other planet clinics. And then they can do more. And then they can bring them back to Earth. More people, that is. Right. How many aliens do you think are working on Earth project? I don't. I have no idea. My estimate is about maybe under ten thousand. I think more than that. Uh, how many do you think? 
Well, I think there are many, many ships out there, so you have to figure what would be on each ship, and some ships are really big. So right. um, I'm thinking probably 30,000. Okay. So our estimate is about 30,000 aliens are working. And what are their medical capacities? Like, I don't know what their complete medical capacities are from what I understand. There are many different kinds. Yeah, I guess they can treat maybe 30,000 people or something per time period. Right? I mean, just the ability of aliens to interfere in human affairs is very limited. Uh, that's That I know for sure. They, they can't really, they're not ready to take so many humans without kind of establishing, without going through proper steps. I mean... I think it goes like, um, as each person ascends to be able to allow that, then they would be allowed the healing. Um, so everyone wouldn't be at the same time. You know what I mean? Like everyone isn't progressing at the exact same time throughout the world. You mean the therapy would be related to their spiritual stage of development, like frequency? That's yes. Yes. So and would the allowance treat? to even be able to see them. Uh-huh. No, that's for sure. That's automatic, right? So, you know, the lower frequencies can't even perceive the aliens, for sure. And then higher frequencies, why do we need then the healing, right? <laughs> if we are so high, high frequency. Yeah, at a certain point you don't need alien healing because you are basically their level or level of um, for self-healing, right? Yeah, I don't know for sure what kind of healing. It just depends, I guess, on what they have in mind for healing or what it is that they uh, know about our past that maybe we don't know that mm. would require healing. I'm talking about like cancer, like diabetes, you know, typical things, major brain depression or disbalance, something like that. I, I'm thinking that we're supposed to discover that on our own, don't you? Right, but you know, they are having the technologies and they are, it's like, you know, it is like America discovered by America, or oh, whatever, America discovered by Americans, by Europeans, right, and um, you know, uh, they just bring their technologies, right? At some point, the Earth, maybe soon, like 40 years from now, maybe less, would have, would be open to imports of technologies, right? So we have another 30, 40 years of developing our own, and then gradually they would allow importing of the technologies, right? Yeah, I don't know. I um, was just reading an article that said dinosaurs actually had tumors as well. So has cancer been around forever? Is it something that is, can even be cured or is it can something that's something? more related to how we treat ourselves? Yeah, yeah. Can I say something to that point? Yeah, thank uh, you. Because uh, I, I, have to, I had to think just recently about uh, cancer because I uh, saw a video made by uh, Tears Swan. She talked about the roots of uh, illnesses, and she mentioned that, uh, like, they manifest as uh, mental, then emotional, and then physical. So, I mean, um, and I, I guess that uh, people, that uh, these specific people we're talking about are aware of this mechanism, but because of the blocking fears, they might not be able to uh, heal from that themselves, so they, you know, uh, maybe, I mean, I just wanted to throw that out there to, you know, I don't know. I hear because you. I, 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 I realized that uh, from that yeah, I guess I guess it's really the fears that don't allow for full healing. So yeah, they, have no, they yeah. have no they they are desperate in that. I guess we are. Yeah. 
Yeah, it seems like every person that can say that they're free of cancer, my sister is one of those, remains very positive through the whole ex experience and keeps on being positive when they are in remission or healed. Um, my sister now has been clean for several years, so um, we had a scare recently, but it ended positively, and she stayed positive again all the way through that. So I guess I have to say is um, your own human emotion, your own human consciousness has everything to do with dis-ease. So by raising your own thoughts, patterns, ability to consume what foods, um, all of that combined, mind, body, spirit, has something to do with the healing from, from what I've seen. That's just from my experience. I agree. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess uh, it it depends how you know. When you get get there in establishment on the top, it's really hard to remain positive. It's re it's it's um, it requires a certain mindset. A certain mindset. You have to be in certain vibration because otherwise you wouldn't stay there. Like you know, as you, you know. Yeah, these people, some of them are visible on television. Most of them are even not visible. On YouTube, actually, there are even more people people of that caliber. Uh, on one hand, they are positive. On the other hand, it's, it's, uh, there are such energies coming through them, positive and negatives, negative. So you get burnt in these neg energies. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know... Coming out and meditating may be an option for some of them, but for others, it's it's a very distant option. Maybe it's a matter of uh, not being able to really have uh, enough dialogue about internal wounds to have to have with people around them. I'm sorry, you know, I'm I'm speaking just only from my imagination. Uh, I totally I, agree with you I, there. I do. I think that a person needs support. But, uh, yeah, I think I think the point uh, Max just made is very crucial because the energies. I I imagine the the mixing the the positive and uh, negative. Energies to be so uh, contradictory that that yeah that would maybe drive them mad. I mean, absolutely. I mean, most of these people are very compartmentalized. There is so many filters allowing them to remain humans and um, function. Say, congr people in Congress, lawyers. Uh, financial people, because there is so many secrets, so many secrets. You have to keep the secrets. Uh, you know that um, funny uh, historical fact. Um, what's his name? Robert Monroe, I think his name. Monroe for sure, but first name I don't remember. Uh, discovered basically the way to train psychics, uh, remote viewers, and established a psych remote viewing institute somewhere in Berkeley, I think it was, in about maybe 60s and 70s. And uh, they started seeing things for practice and uh, whatever, security, government security people become, became interested, of course. And initially they were eager to meet and then they figured out, because remote viewers can see their minds and can trace the history, that would be, uh, and the remote viewers are not, what's it word, uh, sworn, I guess, to secrecy and are not cleared for, for security, security clearance, that that would be for their function impossible to meet with them or dangerous because government secrets could, could leak out to the public. So they would send people who don't have such high clearance uh, some intermediate people to communicate with them because they were afraid of leakage. Um, and it is funny, right? So so most of our current um, establishment um, 
leaders, they have the no secrets which you know are classified. So, <laughs> so and uh, that causes. I mean, that would be causes causing pains and and suffering and uh, physical medical disorders. So treating them is uh, is uh, a challenge, of course. But it is you know if you can just manipulate the physical and the theoretical body, I think it's possible. Yes. Well, from what I understand, oops, sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, I was ju I just wanted to make a point that, like, focusing on alien technology, um, I mean, because it, it's literally, uh, at the end, is going to be a decision of our government, and, uh, you know, we don't know the limits of, of the alien technology, and when we when you think about how much the governments are prepared to lose in terms of um, in terms of how much they're gaining in the medical um, drug um, I don't know companies you know mm -hmm. um, and so uh, my question is how much can we actually contribute towards um, towards that that view of the aliens coming to us and, and, and giving us healing when we know that it's potentially um, damaging uh, the government's economical st stability? Ah, that's a good point. I don't have an answer. Yeah, that would be another fear. So, yeah, if alien technologies come down, pharmaceuticals might be shaken, of course. That's right, yeah. That's uh, that's my point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think our government would allow that at this point. Right. <laughs> well, I think... Isn't, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. Well, they're unwilling to allow uh, medical cannabis, so that tells me but they're I, not going to allow that either because both would impact their earnings. I mean, one, no. I, I could propose that, you know, it could be, this could become as, you know, as, uh, how do you call it, I'm sorry, my mind is in Spanish, I don't know. it could become as, you know, open to the public as, as possible so um, everybody's aware yeah, uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, isn't this, I mean, I think it's a difference if we are talking about people who are making money off of the pharmaceutical industry and like people that are in a higher level of the actual control structures. So they are, have, you know, just an awareness level, uh, from my understanding, because so. Uh, I mean, okay, maybe if you are aware that uh, the pharmaceuticals that you are selling do not actually work but do harm people, uh, that may be the same. Because you are, you are in the position where you are making the decision to actually distribute that. No. So they require, require a certain healing as well, I guess. Right. Yeah, that's, a, you know, you're all raised interesting topics about alien drugs. Can the alien develop new drugs for us? Or new... Uh, or have they already? Or have they came up with a way to not have disease in the first place, so no need for drugs? Oh, for sure, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That, that's a big question right there. That would be awesome to think that there were no need for a drug in the future, you know? Right. No, no, I'm, I was trying to marry the idea of alien therapy, which is not drug-based. Actually, I think uh, uh, there is uh, therapy, Yale medicine, uh, Pleiadian medicine, and Liran medicine, and other, like Arcturian. So for, um, I think the most pharmaceutical are Pleiadians from uh, ERA. I heard they are pretty much into the 
pharmaceuticals as well. I know maybe not as much as we are, but at least they're, they they think in, in in that direction about drugs and biochemistry and stuff. They also have the healing with um, light. Am I right? Light and Absolutely. sound. Yeah, yeah, all of them. Yes, all of them. We were talking about the light and sound thing here recently on one of the webinars, and um, that really piques my interest. I know there are some healing abilities that can come from that, so I want to learn as much as I can. In terms of economy, you know, selling the devices which are therapeutic versus drugs, it's it's a different margin of sales, different volume of sales, because if you prescribe someone a drug, then they pay like monthly, daily. And the devices, you know, the the time for the device usage is like years, so it's a different profit. Um, so yes, it would damage the pharmaceutical industry. So they have to be aware of that danger coming, and rearrange their priorities. But on the other hand, people will become way healthier. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I think it works in a kind of a mad circle right now. Like the pharmaceutical companies have bought off certain people in our government that, you know, so that they can continue to make the drugs that they do. And as far as cancer goes, I really don't think that they're interested in a cure because there's just too much money to be made with the disease. Yeah, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, my point was that um, regardless of uh, how wonderful this healing technology is, uh, my question was how far are our governments willing to give up the income, basically. So, yeah, that was uh, something that was in my mind. Yeah, I don't, they, yeah. they have to be released of the pressure of uh, generating the, the profit somehow. I mean, if if they if they feel that uh, there is this weight of uh, expectation on them from family guys uh, people standing next to them close to them friends family then they will of course continue what they are doing. Yeah, that brings up again the topic of 2027. I um, came across that elsewhere. Unrelated to Jim's channel, so it's it's, be, it's it's coming through other channels as well. I guess at some point our economy will change a lot, and at that point, I guess there would be a possibility for and demand for things which are cheaper and um, easier to produce and easier to share, like more like open source therapy. Can I ask Max? Do you Max. think that um, they, knowing that, like we were just talking, or Sabrina was talking about this morning, a, a UFO crash, and that there were some surviving um, beings. So, if they were hurt, is there any way that they can? Well, you'd think they could channel the way to help them. Like, I'm aware that there was a being at one point that lived for. A while and then got sick and they couldn't cure him but I wonder why wouldn't they be able to uh, channel that information about how to help that being um, I because um, I know that there are you know like channelers in the military that you would think they would have someone that was able to um, relay that to the doctor or whatever to be able to help them. Right. Um, you know, you don't have to channel. You can ask. They can ask. <laughs> they have the phone line to our Gurkfit near people. They don't have to use channels. Um, yeah, but they put them in rooms where where they they're not able to communicate. No, no. I mean, the guys who capture them, they can ask. Oh yeah, yeah. Could, could so do you think that they just aren't aware of who to ask, or that they um, just don't want to ask? Of course, they're afraid, but you know they have uh, intermediaries, intermediate appoint, appointed uh, contact people. So you know, hey guys, if you have trouble healing aliens, you can ask, and uh, you'll be given help uh, directly from your near. I'm sure. I mean, that's kind of obvious. On the other hand, I think um, it is 
there is a positive side of that because you know having captured aliens kind of is also a way of contact. They they are afraid to permit the aliens to come down, but they when they capture them, they actually warn them. It's like, you know, uh, the similar situation is reversal of psychology when um, there is a divorce and the husband is former hu ex husband is um, in a court uh, fighting for the right to have children to see the children certain percent of time, and then they get this right. They actually. Um, uh, are with children and paying more attention to children than they were during the marriage. So in the marriage you spend 10% of time with children and then after a divorce you spend like more like 50%. So same thing here. They don't didn't want aliens to come down but you know when they capture them they actually communicate. So I think that's uh, there is a positive side to that. But of course we want them to be released and want them to be free and want them to be healed of course. Exactly. That's that was my concern. Is that um, at least to be healthy, if they have if they have this need to keep them, to question them, whatever, fine. I guess I'm kind of against that too. But um, if they're going to do that, at least try to keep them healthy as possible by using, uh, the, like you said, connections that they mm -hmm. obviously know. Yeah, I'm sure Greg Fitner can send send a doctor with uh, equipment down there. The issue, uh, though. But the, the, the issue with that is that it's 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 not about that. Um I I think they should be able to leave if that's what they want to do. Because um if we are trying to establish relationships uh with extraterrestrials, we want we should treat them like we want them to treat us. And just like we didn't like it, you know, when things are done to us without our permission, things should not be done to another being without their permission. And if they wanted to come back and say, hey guys, you know, we're willing to talk to you um, and stay here and talk to you, but we want to be able to come back and forth. Now that's something that they could negotiate. That would take trust, that would right? Take Sabrina? Trust, right Sabrina? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but oh, there's feedback from somebody. Um but that's the, that's the that's the challenge there. That we can't just say, okay, if they're healthy. So you're keeping somebody healthy, but against their will. Um, in, well, I don't think that's okay. I said I didn't think that was okay. Yeah. I'm not for that, but I mean, um, to just let them die is just heartless, too. Right, but but under what conditions? Right. Do you see what I'm I mean, saying? Maybe they'd rather die than be kept captive. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, and I think it would be good if we could all, um. You know, if if we the the people that are interested in in aliens and all of these things, um, if if we spread the word, spread the word that there are these capture ETs that they were good, you know, they weren't up to no good, um, and then we would like them released, because right now it's hidden, nobody knows about it, um. And I, I knew about it um, because whoever it was wanted me to know it. Um, but nobody nobody knows about it. Can I ask, uh, I, I'm sorry, but I didn't really get the point. Um, uh, who exactly are we talking about right now? Okay, so there was a ship that went down in Arizona. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, Tucker confirmed it for me today, and somebody else had confirmed it for me also. Um, and there were five ETs there. Um, I know there were Pleiadians, and I think the uh, some were UEL. Um, I know one of the UELs died because um, I saw it. Um, I think three were captured to die. 
Um, it's near really? a small. Yes, it's near a small town in Arizona. Yeah, because I, I saw all of this. Um, uh huh. Um, and I was I was told before it happened. So oh, wow. I I send them the warning. Sabrina, when did this happen? Which day? I believe it was last Friday. Uh, this this Friday, but I you know. I was told a week before. Wow. Nice miracle. And I uh, <clears throat> um, I try to warn them and tell them and you know they tried to check and see because I I knew I knew about it but I, there, I guess I too many You started talking to me about this about a week ago. Um, they 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 tried to check and see um, who where, but it's just too many ships. Mhm. Mm so I couldn't help them, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. So now I just want to try and help them somehow. The ones that are captured. Yeah. So they have three now, right? That they're holding hostage. Yeah. Um, Are this Yale? It's a, I. I'm not sure. Did uh, you say girl, one Yale and the rest I Palladium? Saw one, I, I I didn't see all of them. I only saw one that was in the ground. Uh -huh. I I saw him. He lifted his head and sort of like it was like he looked at me, kind of thing. But he was dead. He died. Mhm. Mm Max, why did you say a miracle? A miracle, of course. But uh, we are talking about a uh, red chip and dead, dead. I mean, a miracle that uh, Sabrina was warned a week before and she was able to channel and see the stuff. And it was a confirmed miracle. Basically, it was confirmed from different sources. It's nice to have a just you know another yeah. confirmation of that extra powers. Yeah, I was hoping to hear something in the news, but I didn't hear anything. I googled. I found few, but there is so many reports of UFO crashes. I mean, it was hard to find which one was that. Yeah, sometimes we don't hear about it for a while after it's happened too. Yeah, it was in the Arizona desert. Um. So but yesterday yeah. it was crashed yesterday? No. Oh, uh, Friday the 1st? Yeah. I got it. No, I didn't see any reports for the for Friday, July 1st. Yeah, I know. I was like, because I, I, I thought, okay, if it becomes the next Roswell, that would be good. Um, yeah. Was, I mean, there is a point help it. It as well. Yeah. So... But I'll let you guys get back to your conversation. Sorry. Well, it kind of had to do with that because, you know, we were talking about, um, you know, how health and matters like that. And, you know, if they are holding three, then how do we know that their health is okay? How do, how do we know that, that? I mean, maybe you'd like to be able to channel them. But like you said, they're being, if they're being held in a room where they have all of that blocked, then there's no way to get through to them. They can't get through to their homeland. Um, it must be very scary for them to be stuck in this room that doesn't allow them to communicate. I don't think aliens are that easy to scare. I think they are more like uh, saints, at least from my perspective. They understand. You saints, I don't know. I, I don't think they always tell the truth either, so I don't know if I'd go so far as saints, Max. <laughs> that, you know, good and bad in all beings is how I think about it, and I have heard good and bad stories, so I like to keep that, that well, even I mean, point of view. I mean, they're psychic. They're very psychic. They have understanding of their karmic path, of their connection to the spirit, of their connection to the past lives and all of that. I, I'm so sure. more wise. 
Yeah, they remember their past lives. So for them, the death, I don't think as scary as for humans because for most humans, it's like still mo most humans don't believe they will live again. For them, it's like end point. And for aliens, they, they understand. Basically, they, the reincarnation for them is, you know, is not a belief, but, uh, you know, they know about it from inner psychic ability. So, but again, I mean, it's just, you know, it's... Ray, uh, can you talk today? What? I, wonder if she, I was wondering if Ray could talk today because she had some interesting stuff she put on the side there. Uh, that would be nice if she could say it. Oh. Do you see the side chat, Max? Oh, no. You don't? Okay. I, I see now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, she's just talking about... Um, oh, she can't, she can't uh, talk. She's at her parents' house. So you can go ahead and read it if you want to, Max. Go ahead. Read, read, could you read it? Your English is a little better. I'm, fa I'm fairly telepathic in my dream states. I can stretch out my antennas to these beings in this idea and see if anything comes. Even if my consciousness stops at a building where I know they're in there, it may be something. I don't think I can be of much use other than that and being in contact with you guys about it. Sorry, I'm at my parents' house. You can read. Yeah, oh, she'll keep us updated. That would be very helpful, though. Or if Ray could do that for us and just kind of see if she can't feel where they're at at least. Yeah. See, I, I tried to um, to see where it was. So I managed to walk through this little town that is next to the crash site. Um, but I couldn't get, I couldn't figure out the, the name of the town. Um, uh -huh. but, but I know there was, you know, there, there was this, this small town next to it. I think a few people saw it, um, but I'm, I'm not sure if it got recorded or anything. So I haven't tried to see any more about it. Um. So I have to try and see if I can get any information on on the uh, the ones that were also. I think it would be good if we if we try and do that, you know, using our different abilities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what Ray was just saying to everyone to open up and try to receive pictures that um, tell a story for you. Also, we can uh, do a, we can do a. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's just an intention put out. Anyone can do this. Actually, I recommend everyone here to open receiving pictures like this and stay in contact with each other. It's great. This is for, out for everyone to hear and participate in. Okay. Actually, if I can, like, my feeling right now is that uh, I am kind of wondering what um, what this is about because I don't get any negative activity from all of that. So. Uh, and it's but it's the first time I hear I actually hear about uh, a yell of the aliens being heard. I never heard heard anything like that. Uh, it's the first time I I hear something like that. But uh, so it kind of got me puzzled right now. <laughs> but uh, I don't I don't when I listen to my intuition I don't feel there's like no resistance, nothing to be figured out. That's my problem I have right now, you know? I don't know what, uh, I don't, I can't, so I don't know. What do you mean, what do you mean no resistance? Well, usually I feel um, conflicts arising from something, but when I, when I listen to that, the energy of it, I don't feel... Yeah, because these are good guys. These weren't, you know... Um, they're, they're, I'm pretty sure that the, their ship was sabotaged by Graves. Um, so... And, and I knew that beforehand. 
um, I, I, you know, because I was given that information. But um, sorry, I got a mosquito here. Kind of bugs me. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So, but um, you know, there obviously they weren't here to do anything and. And hopefully the government realizes that and lets them go. Mm -hmm. I wonder whose decision is to release them. Yes, good question, Max. <laughs> Congress. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, um, just uh, I mean, you know, I don't. Um, we had these two uh, streams of conversation. First, we this is the second uh, part, and and first we were talking about the healing of uh, of uh, governmental people. And Max, maybe I have a question um, because do do you have any like I, because from my understanding there are different levels of um, authority, so to speak, um, in within the government and the shadow government and stuff like that. So can can you maybe point out who exactly the healing would be addressed to? Like is it the top top people on earth in physical bodies or is it like uh, is it representatives it was, in, that are in the public? I don't think it was discussed in in that much detail. I think what Takur said they expressed the interest. So I don't think uh, the structures have been formed who decides on human side who to send but obviously I mean they would be interested obviously they would be interested uh, and if they did I mean they, they, you could imagine there is a I'm sure there is international um, unified organization which deals with extraterrestrials like men in black or something like that because you know all presidents have been briefed you know different countries so there is international a, a secret organization which deals with that, and then there are layers and layers of between this organization and the ones who deal with human economy and uh, military alliances and stuff like that. So, so who is uh, who will go? I don't know. But you know there are influential figures, and uh, some of them are critically sick. So, I would say those those would be first candidate candidates like rich people or political figures or military figures. You know, or their family members. I mean, there are important. You know, there are people who would they. I would say there is possibly some consensus. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. <laughs> is it okay. sufficient? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the whole system is so messed up. It's it's very fragmented. Uh, it's well described by uh, Richard Dolan. Richard Dolan, in his you know several books of uh, on you know shadow projects and black projects and black economy and um, you know uh, men in black. Yeah. So there is certain. Um, there was that book, uh, the day after Roswell, by the officer who was investigating. And he saw the bodies, and he kind of was aware of the things. Uh, somewhere, you know, high clearance in the. In, he worked mostly in in Washington, and um, he described the compartmentalization of defense activities, not only in the American government, in all governments. Like in America, there are there is certain compartmentalization, so different parts of this security forces are kind of separated and they don't even share secrets between each other each of them has its own budgets and uh, own uh, agendas and so on so it's it's a a very fragmented system and you know all of them have sick people and members of a family who are sick so all of them would be interested in sending their uh, people to be medically treated yeah, I think. But the issue with that, Max, is that yes, they they all want that. Um, but I think that for Gerfurt Near, that's a bargaining chip. 
if they grant that, if they grant that, you know that that you lost the big wild card you have there. Can you explain what what does it mean bargaining chip and what does it mean uh, what 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 will be lost? Okay, so you know how sometimes because they're trying to bargain the the first contact the site to site. All right, so yes. you know you have it. Um, each side has their own interests. Yes. And each side wants to accomplish a certain thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, each side has something that they can give to the other one mm -hmm. in exchange for something else. All right. If Gert Premier gives them that, but they don't get anything in exchange, you just lost a big, um, that's why it's a bargaining chip. You just lost a big bargaining chip you had when you could say, okay, we will take your family members, but we will also take regular humans that are sick. Right. Um, yes and no. I mean, there are ways around, right? You can um, start with, say, 10 people and then expand it to 50 people and then keep it at a certain rate and then it will be like a demo version. Right. But you say, okay, we'll take, we'll take five of you and five of regular people. You know. Right, I agree. You, I so, agree absolutely. so you, so, so they know, okay, you know, you're not gonna take me for a fool because I'm giving you something and we're not getting anything. Um, and and if the idea is to help human and to help humanity, the the problem. The problem with where you give it to the military, what ends up happening in those instances is you start to lose the faith of the people. Which people? The regular people. You I know, understand. I understand. Uh, because now you're simply negotiating uh, for the military and for those that have always held the power and have gotten everything, you know, and the ones that, that have... Um, that there are in the wheel, sort of speak, uh, trying to figure out how to make themselves healthy with little or no um, health insurance, don't don't have a chance. Right. Can I? Um, I, I would like to address that. So my experience was in Soviet Union, and it was very, very much like the first contact, and very much like uh, development of the contact after the first contact. Uh, so Stalin had Iron Curtain and it was pretty strong until maybe 60s when Khrushchev came. And, um, and then there was obviously people who were sent out were exactly that kind of establishment. There was, you know, every, um, Everyone who was sent, and usually these were like historians, scientists, uh, cultural leaders, they all were party members and uh, cleared for security in, on, on every level. So they were, at the same time, it would be an artist and he would might have like uh, strong relationship with government security people, strong tested relationship. So did the so Soviet people lose the trust into the uh, American? The the you know even the establishment people when they came back, uh, the truth kind of was was shared. I mean it's impossible to hide the truth. It's just there is there is an exchange even if this would be like. Um, KGB, how do you translate? Government security people going back and forth. There will be so much information coming back, which would be impossible to hide. Because right now they are, they know very little. Their knowledge is very confused. We know more about the aliens than they do, I would say. And as they start going, uh, the positive effect would be even bigger. Uh, would be even bigger. Now, would the Earthens? Lose the trust in Gerg Fitnier because Gerg Fitnier allowed a certain number of establishment 
to be treated. I would say, you know, if Birkfitnir behaves appropriately and explains their actions, I think it would be understood. Um, if it was mixed, if it was, you know, five and five, I think it would be understood. I think if it was, if it was done the other way, because, because I understand what, what you're saying, the, the difference with the, with, you know, when it was the Soviet Union, um, was that everyone in the Soviet Union had the awareness of otherwise. They could see the difference, you know, or they had the awareness of difference of somewhere else. So though though you had no chance of acquiring it uh, because of how um, it, the, the, the country was ruled, um, you had the awareness of otherwise. Here there isn't that. You know, the average person has no awareness that healing can happen within the body faster, easier, um, and with very little um, damage to the body. Um, but I think if most people had the awareness of that, they would say, okay, more of the status quo. I think, I think that would be um, what would happen. And, and since you're trying to establish, because it's not just about that, we're trying to establish a relationship here where trust is very, very important. So every step that each side takes is very, very important um, to both sides, not just one side. So that whatever it is done, you have to see, particularly uh, with the humans, how they are going to react to what they do. Because it might not be that. Your intentions might be to, okay, first bring the military and then the people. But that kind of behavior can backfire on you. And those are the kind of things that we have to take into consideration when we start doing certain negotiating as opposed to saying, okay, we will have five military, but you got to let us take five humans, you know, regular humans. <laughs> yeah, children. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. But I think uh, that that is a good gesture of goodwill, good gesture. It's uh, you know for for a doctor to refuse treating even bad guys, I think is not ethical. If they can treat, if they you know if they can send some sick people, it doesn't really matter if this would be. Uh, how can you decide? There is no way to decide fairly. There yeah. is more fair, less unfair, but the, you can't really decide fairly. There is eight billion people on Earth and most of them need treatment so you can't really yeah or choose. you know people that are very sick I, I would say you know you would pick five people who are who are very sick um, and and or or the ten people you know they have to be very sick it can't be something even the ones in the military it has to be somebody that is that is very sick that here on earth you know you you really can't help them obviously they have to know that they can help them because otherwise it would create problems. Um, so, because I don't. Do you really think, Max, that they have they have really figured out human physiology? Who? Uh, the ETs. Figured out what? How we function, the human physiology. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, they they worked on that for many years, and uh, they have many humans out there, so. The medical science is pretty good, pretty good. Yeah, my friend was uh, operated for for cancer, and and um, you know I have firsthand kind of interview. Uh, yeah, there there is a book, uh, X3, extraterrestrial medicine. Uh, I highly recommend on Amazon. Very inexpensive, nice book. Um, now imagine, say, a candidate. A president candidate uh, visits them and spends a week uh, in a space hospital around the Earth uh, being treated. What would be the consequences for th their behavior uh, as a president? In what sense? 
you know, how would it, would it change their attitude towards aliens? Um, I would hope in a positive way, <laughs> um, but we don't know that that hasn't happened yet. Oh, yeah, I know, um, what's his name? Bob Dean uh, spent like three weeks in uh, Alien Sanatorium. He was very happy about that. I, th I think he was in Pleiades, maybe on one of the planets in Pleiades. That was a fascinating account. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have not uh, heard about that. But, uh, it would be nice if um, if they could help with a lot of the um, psychological problems that seem to be going on right now in America. I don't know that so many other countries are suffering so much from the violence that we have here. And it's very sad to me that, um, you know, you really can't turn on the news at all or even on your computer homepage, you just got to hurry up and get past that to get to your business because um, every day is just completely, um, well, it's pounded into your head, the violence, if you let it. Right. And I would like to see that uh, some of the people that are suffering from the psychosis helped for sure. And I know that that's one thing, like here in Montana, we did have one mental health center and um, in the last two years it was shut down and so there just isn't a lot of help for those who are truly uh, mentally in incapacitated and it's very sad a lot of them end up on the street where that's the last place you really want them you know and in fact Valerie Max that's from where I would I would pick five militaries who served on, the, on one of the, on the Iraq war with mental issues to be healed. That would be the ones I would pick. Oh, I, I don't know that or, it should be all military though. You know? No, five. Five. The five that are military, I would start there. I would start I with there's them. There's so many young people that are suffering. And, and, then, and then the other five. Yeah, but the, but the thing is that you can't, you know, the the first few um, from from the military. Um, I know there's a lot of young people that went in the military too, but I'm talking about young people that aren't even that age yet that um, like join in the suicide packs and that kind of thing in high schools. And I don't know that all schools have that, but we have had instances of that happening here in Montana, and it's so so sad and it just needs to be addressed you know, why what's causing this you know but that's the, see and 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 uh, Valerie what I would argue about that is that because that is their experience and something and as, as we all know you know we all come with things that we're going to do um Part of their homework is to figure out their way out of that. And you better than anyone know this. So um, Yeah, but I do know that mm, there's a lot of people that are not quite strong enough to, um, well, to handle some of the stuff that I went through. Right. And I'll be first but, to admit that, that it's extremely hard to come out of it unscathed. And I did not come out of it unscathed, right. and that's what I'm working on now. But that's but, the thing. That's but, that's the issue. That's where that's where we have to take responsibility. Well, that's what I, I was going to continue saying is that um, I would wish for others to get help much sooner than 55 years old. You know, to to be able to find that help. And I mean, I I am so blessed at at even 55 to have been able to find help. But for me. Um, I would wish that the help could come sooner for all those suffering, you know, not just from the traumatic things that I did, but I know that each person has their own limits of suffering that they can deal with without losing mm -hmm. it, so to speak. Of course, of course. And, um, you know, I can't judge what that limit is. For some people, it, it could be the smallest little thing. But if there was just help that they could go to, 
you know what I mean, that they feel comfortable to be able to go to without, um, without having to mm, mortgage their house. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you this question. If somebody came and took off all the mental burden that there was within you in, in two, I don't know, an hour, all right? Do you think um, whatever you uh, learned and were meant to learn, you would have gotten that out of that um, if that would have been done? Well, I can say that I would have not known the difference had help came sooner. You know what I mean? But it could have changed, yes, it would have probably changed my life in many ways. And a lot of those ways, um, I would hope would be better, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so, from my heart is where I'm speaking. I know. That I wish that um, the mental help could just be there for people. Um, right now, I realize that it's just, there's so many that need this help. So many coming back from this service, like you were talking, that are young yeah. men and women that have, you know, families that are having difficulties getting keeping their families together and treating their children the way that they should. Um, for help for them is also most necessary. But then we have these kids that walk into a school and and have a gun and do the wrong thing. Um, I just I, I wish there could be uh, an intervention of some sort that could catch that. That's all. You yeah, and saying? yeah, I, I totally get you. And if it was up to me, nobody would suffer. Yeah, me, <laughs> me too. Um, yeah. um, but go ahead, Max. Were you going to say something? I need to go soon. Uh, let's wrap up with the meditation after you finish. Okay. So, so I just want to say that. Um, I agree with you, um, but by the same token as, as we both know, um, because there are some things to be done, and that's why we come to this plane, um, that some things are to be experienced. And I don't know if that would be seen as interfering uh, with, with people's contracts, if you will. Right, um, that's my point, too. So, so that's, that, that, there's a fine line there, and it just might be that they are meant to heal them, and some people, you know, that was the end goal, that the ETs would heal them, because that was something that they got put in the contract. Um, but, Basically, go ahead. Go ahead, let's finish. So so um, so that's just something to think about. I agree with you, but something to think about. Uh, I just wanted to say that for, for psychology, you know, in most cases, humans have to heal humans. But there is that informational field which is damaged, etheric field, the uh, informational earth informational field which is bombarded and pulled from many sides by. Um, Earth plane figures and uh, extraterrestrial consciousnesses, and that's where we need protection, and we invite more help from our friends to clarify, beautify, purify the informational field. There is a lot of work which is done on uh, etheric part of the field, which where they can help, and which is unaccept unaccessible to us. Um, I wanted to invite the meditation, healing meditation, towards the captured extraterrestrials, which were captured on July 1st in Arizona. Valerie? Sabrina? Yes, we're here. Will you join? Yes. All right. Oh, certainly. Ay alahanna hanna ulaham Allahon Allahon ayyama Allahon ayyama 
Yamanam Allah Yamanam Allah Yamanam Ola yahama hana ola yahama Ola yahama hana ola yahama Ola yahama hana ola yahama Ana Aramaya Go ahead, do, do your part. Go ahead, Val. Oh. Akia Kuru, Kitty, Jay, a Jew, a Jew, a Jew, a Kia I had a yellow now, ma. I had a yellow now, ma. Shatura, Shatura, Anna, Hatura, Shatura, Anna, Ita Hayana, oh, ma. Ita Hayana, oh, ma. Shatura, Shatura, Hana, Shatura, Shatura, Hana, Ula, Yahula, Hana, O Yahala, who Nahaina, Ula Hana, Yuna Halana, Halai, Aina. Hmm. One of the uh, meetings that were captured talking to me. Mm -hmm. They keep saying that they had the awareness that this would happen. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't their destiny. They thank us for the energy that we are sending them. That he had seen one of the other ones, but he doesn't know what's happening with the other one. Mm -hmm. That at the moment they are okay. Wow. I'm going to send a distance Reiki right now. Ula. Oh, I love. Oh, I love. I love. I love. I You enjoy as you're singing, Mac. Mm. He Ooh. said, We knew we would become part of the history of Earth. It was in our awareness. We knew that these things will come to pass. And so it's not something desired. It was meant to be this way. We thank you for your awareness. 
and we thank you for the energy of this time. We are being questioned about technology in our ships. Oh, ayana, ayana. Oh, ayana, ayana. Ulana ayarana ayarana o ma ayarana ayarana ola ayarana ayarana ola ayarana la ayarana ola ayarana ayarana ola ayarana Alleluia. There are two humans that are a part of questioning, and there's twelve that observe as we are questioned. As you know, some information cannot be given, so you can harm yourself. We know what is to come, and we accept our destiny. Thank you. Can you tell, are they Palladian and Yayo, or could you tell, Sabrina? The one talking to me is Palladian. Om Daraswati Om Aim Saraswati Namam Om Aim Saraswati 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 Namam Om Om Aim Saraswati Nama Om Om Aim Saraswati Nama Om Om Aim Saraswati 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 Nama Om One of them is injured. I suppose the one that he hasn't seen. I can't see his face though. What did you say? That the third one is injured. Not severely injured though, but he is in bed. That's why he hasn't seen. Mm -hmm. I suggest they would request the help from Griffith Neal for their therapy. 
it should be possible to bring it up. Okay, I suggested that. All right, he disconnected. I could see the room where he was in. Thank you, Sabrina. <sighs> Welcome. Thank you. Thank you all for helping them. Max, we can't hear you. Oh. Nope. No sound. Okay. Bye, Max. He's got to go. Max. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste, Max. <laughs>